Sigmund Freud may have founded psychoanalysis, but his followers greatly extended and modified his theory. Alfred Adler and Carl Jung began as followers of Freud, but developed their own ideas into major theories. Alfred Adler was born and raised near Vienna. Although he grew up in a wealthy family, he had a difficult childhood. He was frail, unathletic, and suffered from rickets, a vitamin D deficiency that causes soft bones. He was also quite lonely. His father was busy being a grain merchant, and his mother was busy with six children. Alfred was the second oldest. Adding to his childhood trouble, Alfred always lived in the shadow of his older brother, Sigmund. That's Sigmund Adler, not Sigmund Freud. In his theory, Adler stressed the inherently social nature of man and the importance of future goals. Like Freud, Adler believed that birth order was important, but he didn't stress unconscious processes. Adler was less concerned about where people came from and more interested in where they were headed. He preferred to focus more on the individual's goals. Adler's approach, called individual psychology, tried to understand and treat a person in a broader context. Alfred Adler is probably best known for coining the term feelings of inferiority. When we are inferior, we compensate for our weakness. If you hurt your arm, you use the other more. When you break a leg, you use a crutch. Stories of compensation abound. Demosthenes compensated for his stammering by putting pebbles in his mouth, running, and reciting poetry until he could speak clearly. And, of course, he became a famous orator. Annette Kellerman could barely walk as a child, so she took to swimming. She became the mother of synchronized swimming and the inventor of the one-piece bathing suit. The heroes in the stories always overcome great obstacles by compensating. Compensation is a good thing, but overcompensation is bad. It means you're trying to cover up your weakness rather than acknowledge it and accept it. You act in ways that make you feel better. When you feel anxious or inferior, you act strong and brag about your accomplishments. If you feel inferior, you might even invent accomplishments or take credit for other people's work. The opposite of inferiority is superiority, which is similar to what others might call self-actualization. Superiority, for Adler, is not being more valuable than another. It is moving toward completeness and perfection. It's reaching one's own full potential. For Adler, there were three entrance gates to understanding a person's mental life. Birth order, early memories, and dream analysis. Birth order is important because it describes a person's early environment. Although each family is different, Adler found that people's attitudes about their family often fit in predictable patterns. For example, only children often feel like they have no one to rely on. Their parents may be more anxious than those with several children, so an only child might receive special care. You might be pampered or given nervous or anxious attention. Of course, the firstborn child was an only child before being dethroned. Because of the change in status, the firstborn might battle for position by becoming precocious, sullen, or rebellious. As you can see, the theory doesn't predict very well. If there are three possible outcomes to a single condition, you're not much better off than saying you have no idea what a firstborn child will do. But Adler didn't worry about predictions. He was more concerned with attitude. If a firstborn acts like a secondborn, it makes a little difference for Adler's purposes. He was looking for a gate to discover attitudes, whatever the attitude is. The second gate is early memories. What's your earliest memory? If it involves aggression, you might still be battling for position in your family of origin. If your earliest memory is about hiding, perhaps you feel neglected or inferior. For Adler, these early memories help reveal the underlying themes. So early memories were important to Adler because they reflect a person's fundamental view of life. He thought of it as a crystallization of attitude. Adler isn't alone in his interest in early memories. Freud proposed people have infantile amnesia. They repress their early memories because of their sexual nature. Although modern theories of memory don't support such interpretations, there are still many people who believe this doctrine. The third gate is dreams. Before modern neurological explanations were available, people believed that dreams reveal inner psychic secrets. In classical Freudian psychoanalysis, people are thought to be pushed by instincts and drives, and dreams were a way to get a glimpse at these unconscious processes. Adler's concern is discovering your style of life. As a reflection of your inner life and goals, it doesn't matter if they are real dreams or fantasies. If you can't remember your dreams, your daydreams, imagination, and fantasies will do.